So these proofs are kind of no joke, right? Uh, there's a lot to unpack, and the sort of your ability to sort of think concretely and reason about these is not, it doesn't help as much as maybe it, it does for other kinds of proofs. Um, and so this is really an area where you have to rely upon using, being able to use and unpack the definitions uh, that we have at our disposal. So I want to just pick on one of these proofs um, and just get the, the fundamental structure of what your argument might look like down. Um, let me pick on number three for no particular reason. Or actually, no, let me pick on number two. Again, no particular reason, but I think with two, there's one more thing that we can talk about. So in statement number two, you're asked to prove, and I would say this in words, that f of the union is equal to the union of the f's. And both sides of that equal sign are sets, right? It's a set on the left and a set on the right. And so if I'm going to prove that two sets are equal with an element argument, what's the burden of proof here? What's the first thing that I should be thinking about if I'm trying to show that two sets are equal? Exactly. When you see an equal sign between two sets, it's really the same thing in an element argument as a biconditional, an if and only if statement. Um, and so let's unpack that first. What would this look like as a logical, as an if and only if statement? And so here's where our element argument comes in. As an if and only if statement, I would have on the left-hand side to say something about the elements of the set f of u union v. And so I will pull an element out of this set and say x is an element of f of the union, u union v. And then the content of the set equal sign here is that x is an element of f of u union v if and only if what? If and only if x is, yeah, if and only if x is an element of the union of the f's. So that's how to take a set equals, a set equality statement, and unpack it into an, a biconditional, into an if and only if. That helps us, first of all, to uncover the element argument structure that we can use for the proof. What's great about it is that it gives us something. It gives us a tangible element x to work with, as opposed to reasoning about entire sets at once, which we don't actually have a lot of tools to do. Um, for reasons that we'll appreciate in a minute, I'm actually going to change our, our notation here so that my element is called y instead of x. That, again, doesn't change the structure of our element argument, but it's going to make it a little bit easier not to get confused when we try to use the definition in a second. Um, so we unpack it as an if and only if statement. And now we know that every if and only if statement, in order to prove it, we have to do both directions. So we have to show the forward direction, and we also have to show the backward direction. And so I'm, we're not going to do the whole thing now, but let's just do the first step, because this is the step where I feel like we need the most practice. We start by saying, let's let f be an element of f of the union. And what we want to conclude, I'm going to write that down here kind of at the bottom, therefore, Ah, I need more space. What we want to conclude, maybe I'll say thus, give myself more space. Thus, y belongs to f of u, union f of v. So that's the burden of proof for this forward implication. We pick an element from the set on the left. We have to show that it also belongs to the set on the right. Question? We're looking ahead at the final thing that we're trying to prove, that suggests that we may end up having to break out some kind of cases, right? Because we're trying to show that y belongs to the union of two sets which means that y could belong to the first one, or it could belong to the second one. So maybe we'll have cases, maybe we won't. Um, we'll see. But right now, the priority should be to take this statement right here, y belongs to f of the union of u and v, and plug in the definition of what it means to belong to f of a set. So that's the first place I'm going to go. If y belongs to f of u union v, then using this definition, what does that tell us? Yeah. So it tells us that, replacing the a's in my definition with u union v, it tells us that y is equal to f of x for some x that belongs to u union v. Right? 
That's what it means to belong to the union. It means it's the image, it's f of some element of u union v. So thus, using the definition, I'm going to put a big green star here because that's the step that we need the most practice with. Thus, y is the, let me get the quantifiers in the right order. Thus, there exists an x in u union v. So now we have a new player on our stage, right? X is now entered from stage right and introduces itself as an element of your union V. Um, such that, and this is the other thing we know about X, F of X is equal to Y. Okay, great. So now we have a second thing to work with. We have Y, which belongs to F of U uh, union V, and we also have X that belongs to U union V. And now, since there's no Fs floating around over on my X, right? I, my understanding of X is that it belongs to the union of U and V, and there's no Fs and weird stuff going on here. What does it mean that X belongs to the union of U, union V? It's in U or V. Right. So it's either in U or it's in V, or it could be in both, but it has to at least be in one of those two. So now maybe is the time for cases, right? So case one might be, maybe I won't write this formally, but eh, maybe I will. Why not? Case one. If x belongs to u, right? So that may be true that x belongs to u. So if x belongs to u, knowing that f of x is equal to y, what does that tell me? Implies. So y is the image of a point belonging to u. So what set must y belong to? Let's read the definition of the image of a set again and make sure that that's true. Right. So if I want to know whether or not y belongs to f of u, let's just put u's in here where we have the a's, f of u. Is it true that there exists, in case one, is it true that there exists an x in u such that y is equal to f of x? Yeah. In case one, we've decided that x belongs to u, and we know that f of x is equal to y because we know that about x. And therefore, by the definition, x, y belongs to f of u in case one. And if y belongs to f of u, what does it also belong to necessarily? Where are we trying to get to? Yeah, it belongs to the union. f of u, union f of v. So in case one, we have now shown that y belongs to f of u union f of v. So what do you figure case two is? Yeah. And is it going to be any different logically than the one that we just wrote? I sure hope not, because we don't have a lot of time. Case two, if, you belong, if x belongs to v, then since f of x belongs to y, we have that y belongs to the image of v. But the image of V belongs to, sorry, is a subset of the union of F of U and F of V. And since that exhausts both of our possible cases from knowing that X belongs to U union V, that completes the first implication of our proof. And so we've proven that F of U union V is a subset of F of U union F of V. The only thing left to do for the group that's doing this proof is to do the opposite implication, right? to prove that if Y belongs to the union of the Fs, then Y belongs to F of the union.